Please welcome Corsero's John Chunkuti and Silicon Valley veteran who has one of Netflix's very first engineers. He's joined by Atlantic editor at large, Steve Clements. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I don't know what to make of these couches. I don't know what to make of these couches. <laughs> Why don't you lie down? We can like do this differently. Your Miami style. They're just like, you know, I, I think these couches might be good for like Phantom of the Opera, but they're not really Miami couches. I'm How many of these people singer, think so. these are Miami couches? Black. Yeah? Well, I think they should be white. How many for white couches? Yeah? All right, stand up, John. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm sort of a ruthless guy, and I, you know, is, is Jim McKelvey here? Where's McKelvey? Stand up. This guy's like, he blows glass, and in his spare time, he went and he founded Square, and then in his spare, spare, spare time, he's training a lot of people in coding and whatnot, changing the world. We're gonna get in that in a minute. But the one thing I know about Jim, he never wastes time. So let's change these couches to white. Everybody up for that? Yeah? Okay, we're gonna do it right now. I had no idea you were I a know, magician. What's I mean, that? I had no idea you were a magician. I, was, I, mean, I, I just tweeted out, I said, well, turn in at 1045 and I'm gonna turn uh, black couches to white. Guys, this is, this is Bill, right? And this is BJ, or JB, JB, and, and, and their union. <laughs> and they're gonna stop here. So, round of applause for our, our team that's changing the couches Thank here. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So let me, let me open this up. So you were working at Netflix. You uh, knew all the scripts of House of Cards. You spent some time you know, under getting to know the character of Frank Underwood. Why would you leave that for Coursera? Well, you know... Uh, Actually, you left it for Facebook, right? I, I went to Facebook. Yeah. And so first of all, Netflix... No, Facebook I get, but... but <laughs> you know. So why did I leave Facebook? Yeah, why, did you, why, why are you at Coursera? So I'm at Coursera really for the mission. So the mission of Coursera is to create universal access to the world's best education. Uh, we're changing lives, thank you. We're changing lives all over the world, millions of people. Um, it's an incredibly powerful mission and I was very lucky to work at Netflix. It's a company that I You don't think I Netflix has day. a powerful mission? Well, look, no. entertainment is something that's near and dear to all of our hearts. Hold this. Netflix increases human happiness. This is a great man, he did this. Round of applause for these guys, thank, thank you, you so much. Okay, have a seat, dude. Increasing human happiness is a powerful thing, but giving access, you know, only 6.5% of the world's population has any kind of post-secondary education at all. And the reason for that is because universities are amazing. They're great. Um, I'm a lucky beneficiary. But of you don't really education. believe that, right? You're saying that, but there's a big but. No, the but is not that they're not great. It's that they're very slow to scale. So we spent 200 years in the U.S. building out our university infrastructure. Yeah, we didn't even reach kind half of, of our population. This is kind of a silly title. Let me interrupt. I interrupt a lot. But, but, you know, it says how to beat the big guys. Aren't you the big guys now? <laughs> no, no, no. We're tiny. Uh, we have fewer than 200 employees at Coursera. But, you, but, but it, when you compare yourself, your CEO is, it was the former president of Yale University. That's right. He ran so Yale I don't Yale know how many years. students at Yale. What, 30,000, 25,000? I'm not sure. They didn't, yeah, I, I like, didn't apply to Yale. You had so. 12 million people in your programs. Uh -huh. And my people gave me a snarky little point about you that only 5% who enroll complete the course, which is 600,000 people. Mm -hmm. Compare that to any big guy. 600,000 course completions anywhere, it, 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 it is It's phenomenal, it, yeah. it's great. You know, we recently had our partners conference where our partners from all over the world, our university partners, um, all came together in California we were talking and you know, we were speaking to one of the senior people at Rice University and we gave him the numbers for people who have engaged specifically in the great content that Rice has put on our platform and he said, my gosh, you know, we have more alumni through Coursera than the history of Rice University from the beginning of the founding of the university. And Do you know what those numbers are? Um, uh, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I know that our numbers are higher. Millions and millions. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've, right. we've reached 12 million people right. all over the world. It's growing rapidly. Um, and not everybody who has a goal on Coursera needs to complete the course. Many of the, many of the benefits that you can get from a course. So for example, I, I tell everybody, not everyone has to read every article in the Atlantic. <laughs> but we will give you a gold star if you do. Excellent. But yeah. I mean, people like to be rewarded, right? They like to get gold stars. Sure, and absolutely. And not, it's not just a gold star. You know, our credentials for people who choose to get a verified credential on Coursera, that is being recognized all over the world, increasingly um, leading to jobs, um, giving access to interviews. What, is, what does that mean? Break that down for me. What... So the verified credential, so you can take any course on our platform for free. Um, anybody, anywhere in the world, um, on, your, on your phone, on your tablet, on, on, on PC. Um, but you can elect to pay 
uh, for verified credentials. So we verify your identity, we, we, we take your photo, we do keystroke analysis to make sure that it's you, and we give you a credential at the end that says you completed the course, the credential is from the university partner um, that put the course on our platform, and then you can put that on LinkedIn, you can um, put that on your resume, and that opens doors for you to get access. You know, um, if you take the Android specialization on Coursera, um, you get a credential and you write an Android app, and that, that's a one-two punch that's very, very powerful. You have powerful. coding classes? Yeah, in, introduction. And how are to, they going? They're going very, very well. Do you track what people do with them? I mean, after they take your class? Because I'm going to give you Jim, Jim McKelvey again. Is Jim right. still out there? Jim, Jim is, uh, he, he hangs out part of the time in Miami and part of the time in St. Louis, and I don't know if I have these numbers right, but he said there are five places that purport to teach coding in any serious way in St. Louis, three of them suck, mm -hmm. and, and, and two of them are reasonably good, and what he is doing with Launch Code is in a way trying to correct the really crappy uh, coding education that, that is going on, where people get a degree and then they can't use it. So, is, is that kind of uh, challenge a problem for you? How do you get around those issues of quality outcomes, quality placement, you know, hand-holding through the process so that if people need more, they get it. Is that something you're beginning to think about as you layer your services? Yeah, absolutely. So it starts for us with the quality of the content. So we partner with elite universities. You know, we've got the best universities on the planet on our platform. That's number one. You have to have the right content. Um, we work with them. Um, you know, we, we teach tens and hundreds of thousands of students per course. And every interaction, you know, we're, being an internet company is, is you What's know, you your can biggest innovate. Course? Um, our like... biggest course is Introduction to Modern Poetry. Um, really? It's taught by Al Fillery's. It's a, it's a great, great course. Um, so I highly recommend that. Um, uh, I'm not going to recite any poetry Hundreds for you Hundreds of right thousands now. of people take an Introduction to Poetry course? Absolutely. Introduction to Modern Poetry. Modern Poetry. Yeah, because look, you know, we all studied the classics in, in school, you know, um, but Modern Poetry is a very exciting area, and Al is just an amazing instructor. Uh, instructor. So, um, you know, having the right content. We give our partners big data because every interaction a student has um, throws off data so we can help them improve the quality of the content on our platform. Um, that doesn't just help professors on our platform, it helps them in their own classroom because it's the same content. Um, and, you know, we have a community uh, of other learners all around the world who can help you succeed. And we actually recruit from our graduates, the best students, the ones who are engaged the most with other students, we invite them to become moderators for the course. So then they're helping future students get through the course, help them answer questions, help review their work, and help them get better. So there's a lot of ways that we're building out our platform to help everything. You know, because we all come from a very different um, level of expertise coming into the course, but we want every single person who gets through it to have mastery in that field, and that's really what our whole platform is focused so, on. So walk me through it in quick form. Um, my, my, my team and staff tell me I'm not a very modern guy, so I want to go fail at a St. Louis school and learn coding and, and either take your course or Jim's code. Tell me about the story. What, what do I, how does Coursera change my life if I want to be more modern in code? Yeah, so if, if your goal is to um, become a programmer, become a right. developer, um, you come onto Coursera, we've got you know, many different courses um, that can get you from entry level all the way through. So the example of Android programming is a good one. We have an Android specialization. It's a sequence of courses with a capstone project at the end. We take you from a very basic um, technical understanding and we have fundamentals of, of uh, programming you can take even before that if you want carry you all the way through understanding not just programming but Android programming. You write an app over the course of the, the courses. And do um, I get and I, I understand you have a specialty in, in little badges. Well you get a credential at the end yeah. that, that says you've got that mastery. Do I get happy faces through the process or frowns? Um, yes, we're, we're <laughs> uh, there's a lot of different uh, techniques that we use um, to encourage you through, and we're actually really experimenting. Over the course of the summer, that's one of the major areas of focus, is how do we encourage people through this other course? Because this is hard work. You know, learning to be a developer is not um, easy, but anybody can do it. All you have to do is just uh, apply yourself. So if I'm in Nigeria in doing this, and I get the completion code, uh, tell us from your experience, how that has affected real people's lives? Well, I'll tell you a story of a, a specific Nigerian, actually. Um, I think they just had elections yesterday, so it's an exciting time uh, in that country. So uh, there's a gentleman named Jima. Uh, he was studying at a community college um, in uh, Port, Port Harcourt, I think, uh, in Nigeria. Not having a great experience with the education he was getting, but the community college gave him free Wi-Fi. So what he would do is, uh, he was a taxi driver during the day, and he would download lectures from IT courses 
on Coursera using the, the school's Wi-Fi. I don't know if I'm outing him here, but, uh, and then he would watch those lectures in his phone when he was idle on the text, and he learned IT skills. He was actually, he got so good at it, he was hired by that school to run their IT system. So he became in charge uh, of the, the Wi-Fi system that he had used, so uh, uh, that allowed him to continue to take courses on our platform, and of course, that was a much better job, much more high-paying than um, the taxi work, much more rewarding for him, and that's the kind of story that you know, we're trying to create all over the world. Um, and and Jim is a real guy who whose life. What are a couple of the other human stories that have moved you? Gosh, you know, um, they really range. I mean, I'll tell you two different ones. Uh, you know, from India. You know, one story is a, a guy named uh, Vivek who lives in Bangalore. Um, you know, both of his parents um, uh, were out of his life as a young man. His, his mother uh, passed away, and, and his father. Um, had had issues and was unfit as a parent, so he was raised by his uncle. wasn't a great relationship. wasn't um, um, sent to to uh, meaningful education, and but he wanted to start a business, uh, like many people all over the world. Many people in Miami, I'm sure, are in a similar situation. So he found Coursera. He took courses on Coursera, um, technical um, business courses, and he founded uh, a startup um, that's very successful in Bangalore. And he has all of his employees go through uh, Coursera courses to gain skills to get better at their job, and he just really believes in education um, and is trying to make that a key benefit of what he delivers um, to his employees. So, you know, that, that is a story that's very profound, and many of the people who use our platform are entrepreneurs, because as an entrepreneur, you're not an expert in everything that you need to do. You're not both, you know, a salesperson and a business and marketing and engineering, but if you want to develop skills in those areas, at least to manage people, to select people, you know, we're a great platform. You know, a, a very different story, uh, is a, a 12 year old girl named Olivia. Uh, she lives in Calcutta, uh, a very strong student, young woman. Her, her dream is to study at an American uh, university, a great university. And so she's taking courses from, you know, we have partners from all over the world, including India, but she's focused on taking courses from US universities. It helps her understand the quality of education at different schools. And there's nothing more powerful to say, hey, I can thrive at your university than to demonstrate that she already has. So she really believes, and her story is not finished yet, uh, she really believes that taking courses on Coursera um, is, is her ticket to uh, the education that she believes will change now, her life. How many of your students are American and how many are beyond American shores? 73% of our learners are non-US. So we're broadly That's staggering. You know, two years ago, uh, Reuters, Thomson Reuters did an interesting survey comparing what people's attitudes towards the future were, what kind of confidence, you know, measuring cynicism on a lot, variety of issues. And there was a very, very big difference between the way Americans saw the future in taking hold of things and the way, say, Brazilians and Indians and Indonesians and others. And that you could sort of tell, one, there was huge optimism, and two, just incredible boldness and a sort of a sense of ownership of the future in right. these entrepreneurial classes outside the country. Mm -hmm. Measuring the U.S. on the whole, and not just looking at entrepreneurs, it was much more bleak. People had much less confidence in the future. They didn't. So are these platforms that we're developing, that are developing here, just not meshing with America because there, there, there's sort of a, uh, an aspiration gap between the rest of the world and, and the United States? Um, I don't believe so. I mean, I think that... You have 73% of your people outside the United States. Yeah, but more than 73% of humans are outside the United I, uh, States. Well. So, um, now, I don't know that what is the, that is a That's a tweetable moment. Touche. I don't know what percentage but, of yeah, internet users cool. are outside the U.S., but I, I yeah, think... No, that's actually very good. The U.S. is incredibly entrepreneurial, but what uh -huh. I think is, you know, we have a big advantage over the rest of the world when it comes to post-secondary education. Right. So think about China, think about Brazil. Um, you know, these are markets, you know, Brazil's interesting, it's our fourth biggest market. We don't even have Portuguese courses yet. Only 6% of Brazilians so you do, speak you English. Do, you do operate in other languages? We do operate in other languages. In fact, uh, another way we recruit out of our communities, we build translation mm -hmm. um, communities. Um, we're focused uh, on Chinese right now. Um, look for some exciting uh, news about Portuguese. We could get together with this Microsoft uh, translator guy. We, we, we chatted yeah. earlier. Yeah, I also okay. spoke uh, with Jim okay. from Launch Code, and that is, uh, there's some exciting potential to partner there as well. Um, but, you know, there's an incredible demand there because they, they don't have the university infrastructure that we do. So, you know, they're um, using our content to um, level the playing field and create access for themselves that wasn't there before. You know, if you, if you sum the Spanish-speaking markets, we've got 60 courses in uh, Spanish, 
but 10% uh, of our learners uh, are in Spanish, and, and that's 60 is far less than 10% of our courses. So these markets are out indexing because they don't have the access that um, the U.S. does. We need a lot. We need to do a lot of work in the U.S. Um, to raise uh, uh, access, but but we're actually better off in many ways than some of these other. You know, I was reading the table out in the hall about about you know what motivates you, you Miami person, and somebody re wrote money, and I was very happy. Um, but but I mean, you do seem like a guy who wants to change the world, but yeah, but you 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 can't build a scale that just just changing the world with this. I mean, how do you guys make money? Uh, well, because how do you keep yourself sustainable? The, the courses are free, but you know, at high scale, that can work out to be very profitable. Oh no, wait, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> We're screwed. No. Uh, so you can elect to get the verified credential, um, and that credential, you know, an increase, you know, the, the rate of growth of our and that's users, like an accredited thing in certain places that they're beginning to use that as a there's all kinds of ways that, that the value of our credentials growing and growing. Um, a lot of it is organic. Um, but a lot of it um, is um, very specific work that we're doing. So, for example, we're increasingly partnering with companies, companies who are aspirational employers in the fields uh, uh, of the courses that we work in, and they help us uh, design the capstone project for our specializations, and their endorsement and engagement helps the world understand these credentials are valuable. So the Android specialization I talked about, you know, Google has partnered with us on that. We're going to release an interaction design course, um, and Mike Krieger, the founder of Instagram, is partnering with us on that. Cool. And, you know, cool. these are aspirational companies in these fields. You don't get better design than um, Instagram. We're working with 500 startups, um, which is an incubator um, in our entrepreneurship um, uh, specialization. And you know, these are um, the, the top class uh, companies in these respective fields. And that is a signal to every other employer, hey, these credentials are really powerful. You know, when this, when this whole startup city Miami thing began, the Knight Foundation and Richard Florida, uh, the Atlantic got together and, and, and many people, other people in this room, and were sort of chess players playing a, a, a game in, in the Miami region to, to build something. Uh, I know you're a board game player, you've told <laughs> yes, me. Yes. Uh, and, and, and basically to take, to, to create a foundation, an ecosystem that, that can instill here in Miami, right. something that I think Miami itself didn't know it could achieve, that right. fundamentally an ecosystem that becomes, you know, developing highly innovative, high growth, entrepreneurial companies that go to scale. What do you think the two or three most important takeaways that people here could get from Coursera and what you're doing? Well, so first of all, there, there was actually a great article in The Atlantic written by John Tierney um, about Pittsburgh and how P Pittsburgh has done right. really well on this. And you know, there's a few things you really keyed in, keyed in on, and I, I think he's right on. Um, you need to have access to capital. You need people who are willing to invest at the seed, seed stage to figure out who the winners are. Um, you need to have a government that's supportive of um, nurturing and growing the kind of um, uh, tech space that you want. Um, you need to have a way to kind of position yourself. So for Pittsburgh, it's like, hey, we're not as big of a, a city. I think Miami has real natural advantages, culture, climate, and you're a gateway for Latin American talent to come to the U.S. And you know, immigration is really powerful. The, the 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 last key is education. And you know, for Pittsburgh, they've got you know some of the top tier universities in the world. Miami's got a good educational basis, but that's where uh, companies like Coursera can come in in two powerful ways. First of all, we can grow the, the base of highly educated people. Anybody in the greater Miami area can go to Coursera, learn how to be a marketer, learn how to be a developer, et cetera. Um, so that can really grow uh, the talent pool in the space. But number two, again, you know, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you can supplement the education that you had with courses that are very targeted in the areas that you want to understand better that helps you um, identify the talent that you want. But I promise you, you know, if you want to... Um, hire some developers from elsewhere in the country. Call up uh, uh, engineers in Boston right now. Um, they've had a couple of tough winners, and you can tell them, oh gosh, sorry I'm late, I was down at the beach, you know, it's 75 degrees here, and uh, you're gonna get that call back. So uh, counter cool, positioning is cool, really important. Cool. So before I go to the audience real quick, what courses have you taken? Have you taken any of your own courses? Yeah, right now I'm taking a course in uh, public speaking. I'm early in that course, so hopefully uh, I'll get better. Uh, I'm taking a great course called Learning How to Learn. Um, other courses I've taken recently, I have a young son. I, I took a course from Stanford on child nutrition, which was great. Um, I took a, a course from Wharton Business School on gamification. So uh, when we talk about focus on helping encourage people through the course, uh, if that works out well, you can thank uh, Kevin Warbach over at uh, awesome. uh, Wharton. So some great courses. Awesome, great. Well, let me open up, the, this is a very interesting guy. Let me open up to the floor right here. I see a... Yeah. We have the world watching here. Every Coursera student 
I'm just wondering, do you envision a future where having a Coursera credential is more important than an AS degree or a bachelor's degree? And, oh, that's and, such and, a cool And question. how will this work and what will the competition be like? The universities are almost <laughs> competing against themselves by providing this content. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the key thing for me is, like I said, less than 10% of the world's population even gets any one of those kind of degrees. So our mission is not, hey, let's target the, that 6.5%. Let's make it 65%. Let's 10x it, um, number one. Number two, uh, you know, the pace of knowledge in uh, basically any field is just growing and growing right now. So if you have a marketing degree from 10 years ago, you know, you didn't study digital marketing. That's the focus for marketing right now. So you can use a platform like Coursera to learn new technical skills and learn new skills in your field. And, and yeah, our credentials are already, you know, if, if you have an a undergraduate degree in computer science from a university someone hasn't heard of, or you have an Android specialization credential from Coursera um, supported by Google, you've written an Android app, if someone's trying to hire an Android developer, you'd be hard pressed to pick which one of those is stronger. Cool. That's already happening today. Quick one. Hi, my name is Eric. Huge fan of Coursera. I've taken fascinating courses from Wharton and Stanford and did the University of Michigan. Them? Yeah. Oh, good. I did. Right on. Uh, didn't, do all of, didn't do all the assignments, You're a data but I, point I watched that he's all the lectures. Of. Yeah. Um, and okay. uh, I'm curious, do you have any real, thoughts real on uh, the no pay MBA? Have you heard of that? I have not heard of the no pay MBA. So it's an American girl. I believe she's in South Africa. And she put together a three year curriculum that mirrors an actual paid MBA. And she's building it based off of all your free courses on Coursera as well as another. That MLSA. is awesome. That's great. And it's like, good for well, her. Yeah, great. We Listen. have learning hubs all over the world where people are using you know, physical spaces to create internet access um, to allow people to learn together. It's a really exciting aspect. Ladies of how and it gentlemen, works. John Chunkuti of Coursera. Thank you. And now Thank you, you have Steve. white couches. Hey, thank you. Hey, right, thank you.